A while ago, I was staying at an upscale hotel in the safe area of a large Midwestern city. I'm a 16-year-old female, and I was in a room all by myself, with my parents just a few doors down. In theory, this was not unsafe by any means. I just happened to have some bad luck on this particular trip. Our first night there passed without incident, me in my room and my parents in theirs. I watched a pay-per-view movie and ate way too much from the snack bar. I didn't have any reason to feel unsafe. The next morning, we did the usual tourist stuff one would do when visiting a new city. As we ate breakfast in the hotel restaurant, I noticed a man who looked to be in his 60s or so, staring at me for an abnormally long amount of time. I won't lie, as a young, decently attractive female, I was used to getting the occasional inappropriate look every now and then. I just ignored it and chalked it up to him either being a perv or thinking I must have looked like his granddaughter or something. The next night, my parents allowed me to meet up with a friend for dinner who happened to live in the area. He met me in the hotel lobby and we had a very nice dinner, then went back to the hotel for drinks. Yes, I was underage and I did have a drink, shoot me now. Coincidentally though, I noticed that same man who had been eyeing me earlier was at the bar as well. This time, he was giving me a very creepy vibe. Even with my friend next to me, his eyes traced over every curve of my body. I felt unsettled and I mentioned this to my friend Ethan, who glanced over also. He too seemed to be weirded out by just how obvious this guy was being with his leering. We left the bar quite quickly, and by now it was around 12.30am. Ethan walked me to the elevators of the hotel, and once I pushed the button, he left me. I wish I would have asked him to stay, because no sooner than he had walked away, my creeper came rounding the corner and stood there waiting with me for the elevator. I felt so uncomfortable knowing that he would be seeing what floor I was going to. It hadn't occurred to me to get off at a different stop at the time, and even if I did, he planned on following me obviously, so that would have been just as bad a move. As we got into the elevator together, I tried to keep my eyes averted from his, but I could feel him just staring at me. He kept on trying to step closer, and I kept backing up, too scared to even speak. What freaked me out even more was that he hadn't pressed a separate elevator button. This meant he planned on getting off exactly when I did. When I got to my floor, I almost sprinted to my room. The man just stood at the end of the hallway, waiting to see where I was going. I stayed in my room for about 15 minutes until I was sure the man was now gone. I ran and told my parents what had just happened. They were freaked out and told the hotel staff as well, but there was no sign of the man now. It was quite late, so I just locked my door and tried to get some sleep. I had almost drifted off when I heard a loud knock at my door. Now, I had almost drifted off when I heard a loud knock at my door. I'm not an idiot. I've browsed so many of these types of stories for such a long time that I knew not to go open the door at 2am. Instead, I turned on a light and froze in place. I don't know if it was my intuition or what, but somehow I knew it was that same guy. I was near tears, but the knocking kept continuing, harder and harder. Finally, I shouted out and asked who it was. The voice that replied to me was the most chilling thing I've ever heard. High-pitched but growly, almost giggling. It's so disturbing I can barely even describe it. It's hotel staff, please let me in. I was terrified. A look through the peephole confirmed it was that same creepy old man. I locked myself in the bathroom and called my dad's phone. He had a habit of always keeping his ringer on, so he answered almost right away. I tried to tell him what was going on through my tears. That guy from before, he's at my door. That's all I managed to say. What happened next gives me nightmares. My dad naturally went into superhero mode and opened his door, only to find the old man in a single robe, masturbating. It was pretty obvious to piece together what he was planning. I still dream about and have severe PTSD from it. My dad slugged the dude in the face and made sure he didn't move an inch while my mom called the hotel security. We pressed charges, and the guy is now in prison. 
I believe with what are assault with intent to commit rape charges, but I could be wrong. So last year, my friend slash neighbor and I were outside in the front of our yards, enjoying the fireworks on the 4th of July. We were enjoying the sights and sounds that filled that warm summer night air, but something was not right. Across the street from where we live, there's this old abandoned house. Because of this, I can say for sure this person we saw was not a neighbor or anything like that. In front of this abandoned house, we could see what looked like the figure of a man standing there right by the side. The house was owned and taken care of by friends and relatives of the people who used to live there, so we figured maybe he must have been one of them, even though he did not look familiar to either of us. I couldn't really see much since it was so dark, but he looked like a white guy with long, badly kept hair. He seemed rather tall as well, with a very thin-sized body build. We ignored that guy though, and went back to running around and looking at all the beautiful fireworks. From my peripheral vision though, I could catch some sort of movement by the abandoned house across the street. The man was still there, but this time I noticed he was slightly closer than before. My friend and I went by her house, and I told her that the man was clearly trying to approach us or something. I really didn't think this guy meant well. As I was in the middle of telling her my suspicions, he started to move very, very slowly toward the street, with his vision focused right on where we were. We started to freak out and ran inside her house. I spent a few minutes, maybe 10 or 15 there. I was a little scared to go home, honestly. After a while, though, I thought, man, fuck it, I'm only a house away. That guy must have lost interest by now. I go back outside, only to find the guy is still across the street. This time, though, he's back in that exact spot he had been when I first spotted him, just staring at me. Maybe this guy wasn't really a creep or anything. Maybe he was hurt or lost or sick or something. I looked over to the man and called out, uh, sir, do you need any help? Are you alright? The man just continued standing there, showing no signs of having heard me at all. I stood there hoping a response would come, but there was still nothing. At this point, I was feeling very uneasy about this man. A minute or two passed by after I called out, but it felt like hours. I just couldn't take this anymore. I highly doubted he wanted any help and at this point I just wanted to go home and forget all about this. I quickly sprinted to my house. I was on the porch hoping my mom would open the door quickly. I was banging on the door. I look back to where the man is. He's walking across the street, right in the direction of my house. My mom finally opens the door, and I sprint inside. I don't know why I didn't think of telling her. I suppose I didn't want her to freak out or anything. My other friend called me, and I talked to her for a while, hoping to calm down my nerves just a bit. A good 20 minutes had passed by at this point, and out of curiosity, I took a look outside the window across the street. The man was once again standing in the front yard of the abandoned house, staring at mine now, completely still in that first spot, just watching. I locked all the doors and let my dog inside. I grabbed my phone and waited in my room hoping nothing would happen. When my dad got home, I felt a lot more at ease. By then, it had been an hour or so since I'd last seen him, and sure enough, when I looked outside, he was gone. I never saw him again in that neighborhood either. I don't know if I overreacted, but as the old saying goes, it's a lot better to be safe than to be sorry. A couple years ago, during the summer after my junior year of high school, my friends went to the beach to see the 4th of July fireworks. A bit of background information. I lived a county away from my friends and wasn't familiar with the area around that beach. Only one friend, Shelby, lived anywhere near it either. The others lived much further inland. 
none of us could drive at the time, so we walked several miles to the town beach from Shelby's house, before the fireworks. We were making our way back in the late evening around 10 o'clock or so. There's a certain distance from the beach where the crowd from the fireworks always disperses as they make their way down all the side streets, at around the point where the major shops in town are. We had to keep following the straight road through the center of town, though, to get back to Shelby's house. The streets were mostly empty at that point, with only a few stragglers and the occasional cop at a very busy intersection. There were four of us in total. Shelby, Amber, Hannah, and myself, walking in rows of two with our arms linked together. We had had a really good time that night, and were still feeling kind of giddy and goofy. Hannah was my partner, and Shelby and Amber were walking behind us. We were on a bit of a stretch of road with no side streets, with a bunch of smaller shops on it. Everything was closed due to the holiday and late hour. We noticed a group of a few men, around their late twenties or early thirties, standing on the sidewalk outside an empty gas station. They didn't move to get off the path when they saw us walking toward them, which I did think it was a bit odd. It was a holiday and they were obviously pretty drunk, so we stepped off into the street to just walk around them. No big deal. One man grabbed Hannah's arm while we were trying to pass by though, and asked if she had a cigarette on her. None of my friends smoked at the time, so we very honestly said no and continued to walk once Hannah managed to pull her arm away. The man was fairly tall and well-built, and we were all pretty short. We were a little bit startled, needless to say, but we tried not to make too much of it as we walked down the street. We even made a few jokey comments about it once we were far enough away. Several minutes later, Amber and Shelby fell a bit behind, because one of the crappy flip-flops Amber was wearing had broken off her foot. Hannah and I didn't notice at first, and kept walking along, until next thing we knew, Shelby and Amber were leaning over our shoulders, whispering that the man from the gas station who tried to ask Hannah for a cigarette was following us just a few yards back, none of his friends in tow. We were all a little bit freaked out at this point, but we decided it was possible he just happened to be going in the same direction. We decided to pick up the pace and continue down the street to be safe. At this point, there were intersections that started appearing every few blocks or so. We switched to the other side of the street at one of these and kept on going. We thought we probably had nothing to worry about anymore. Until Amber looked back over her shoulder at the next intersection and saw the guy was now closer and on the same side of the street as us once again. We switched once more and the man switched with us. The third time we switched, the man didn't. Instead, he just started walking faster on the other side of the street. A bit after the intersection, a big commercial truck was parked on our side that blocked the view of most of the street in front of us. Something did not feel right to me, so I made everyone hang back for a few moments, and we stopped a couple of yards away from that truck. Lo and behold, I saw the gas station guy quickly run and cross in front of the truck, and head down the side street next to it that was between two shops that were already closed for the evening. Shelby started swearing. We turned around and ran back to the intersection, then back down the street that intersected that street we had been walking on. We were only one empty train parking lot away from Shelby's house now, so we kept running full tilt down the street. Once we were halfway through the lot, she explained to us that the side street he ducked into wasn't even a real street. It was just a dead-end alley between the two restaurants. Nobody familiar with the area would ever walk down there on purpose, but it would be the perfect place to go if you wanted to get the jump on somebody walking by. Luckily, in the end, we made it back safe and sound. I've worked at GameStop for about four years now, and in multiple places as well, some of them sketchier than others. I'm a key holder there and I often close the store, so I'm normally out at around 10pm or so. The last two years I've been at a rather nice GameStop in a better area, so I had discarded some of my habits I had accumulated over the years for my own safety. I'm about 5'3 and very small 
so I'm an easy target for unsavory things. Anyway, it was about 10pm or so, and I had just closed up shop with the other employee. I didn't have a car, so I had to wait for my ride for a while instead. This was not out of the ordinary, but tonight she happened to be running a little bit more late than usual. Usually whoever I'm close with would always offer to wait with me until my ride showed up, but I always assured them they could just go on their way and everything would be fine. The GameStop I work in is in a decent sized strip mall slash plaza with many other stores including a Walmart. Most stores closed a little sooner than us so we were typically the last ones out anyway. The associate I'd closed with walked across the lot into his car, got in, waited about 5 minutes, then left and waved on his way out to me. As he did this, I waved back, when I noticed another car a bit further back in the lot. It happened to be the only car left. I assumed it must be someone else getting out a little bit late. My eyes followed the associate's car, all the way to the end of the plaza until he was gone. I checked my phone and saw my batteries were low, but I could see that it was about 10.10 now. I was sure my rod would be here any minute, but that's when I saw the other car begin to move. They must have been sitting there, because no one had walked over to the car since I had left my store. They didn't turn on their headlights either, which was quite odd to me. It started up that gut-wrenching feeling. It was a little bit weird. I felt like I should leave right now. Still though, it's not like I could just walk home. The car drove around the lot and then slowed down, right near me. At this point, I had my phone out just in case, and I had my messenger bag on my shoulder, in case I'd need to ditch it fast. The person pulled up about 15 feet from me, just outside the first handicap spot. The car stopped but was still running. It was an old, gross, beat-up two-door with rust all over. The door opens, but no lights come out. Out steps a very large man, almost six foot two. He had brown, messy hair and was fairly lanky. His clothes were stained with grease or sweat, and he looked very unwelcoming. He had just casually gotten out of the car, then turned around and clicked his front seat upward. Immediately, with the door open, he started sprinting to me. I hadn't even realized at first, but I was already on my feet backing away from the man. He kept eye contact and made a gesture to come back. Basically, from there I turned around and booked it to the Walmart parking lot. The sketchy guy ran back to his car, pulled around and started driving toward me. I did not know him. The store had been closed for over an hour now. It was pitch dark and the lot was completely empty. There was no reason to be approached like this. Still, he had his headlights off, which absolutely terrified me. I could hear him behind me, but it was still dark. My heart was pounding in my ears. I couldn't tell if he was right behind me or to my left even. I peeked back only to see him slowly driving toward me. At this point, I was certain I was about to be shoved into this car and sold into human trafficking or some shit. I was in an absolute panic, but what else could I do but run? The Walmart was still so far away, I was sure he would try to make an effort to get me in his car by then. I felt like he was driving slowly beside me to tease me and scare me. Just then, I noticed a big truck in the very back of the Walmart lot, with five people surrounding it. There was another car and their hoods were up. Someone was jump-starting a car. I hauled ass in their direction, since they were closer than the Walmart. As soon as I felt I was in earshot, I started screaming for them to help me and that a car was behind me chasing me. The group looked shocked. For all I know, they could have been sketchy too, but that was just a chance I had to take. A man and a woman ran toward me and met up with me. I was pretty nervous and shaken up, winded and could hardly talk. I looked back and I could see the taillights of that car driving away. I walked toward the rest of the group, which was a few people attempting to jumpstart another car. I told them a huge guy had been following me, and I felt very unsafe. They offered to call the cops, but I had been unable to see his place in the darkness. And really, I just wanted to go home. They offered to give me a ride to Walmart, which I politely declined under the circumstances. The two women of the group and one man were kind enough to walk me into the Walmart, though, and even waited with me for my ride to arrive. 
I thanked them profusely and went home. After that happened, I requested to open for about a week, so I wouldn't have to be at the store after dark. The next day, I also told my boss the time had happened, and we both watched the DVR in the back. It was incredibly uncomfortable to watch, but we did forward it to the local police. The police didn't end up finding much, but they now keep a squad car patrolling the plaza from 9 to 11 p.m. I don't take chances anymore. I wait inside the store until my ride calls me and is in sight. I was bothered for a little while, even though I feel I was lucky. I always felt like that type of thing only happened in the city or in unsafe places. Not to me and not here. I haven't discussed this much, but it still bothers me. I guess you're really never safe. Okay, so years of watching and reading about true crime has led me to be extra cautious and always on the lookout for people who are out of place or acting odd. I believe this has helped me from several bad encounters, and this is probably the worst of them. I was a junior in college at a local university that was located in the city. The campus was about a mile wide, and I lived just over a mile away from it. I lived in an apartment building that was owned by the university, so only students lived there. It was known as the Poor Kids Apartments and was the farthest from campus. It was also in a fairly bad part of town. The apartments had recently had issues with break-ins, so I was extra cautious about who I held the door open for. The door to the elevators was one that locked when it closed, and only people who lived there had the keys. Sometimes, though, people held the door to save you needing to grab your key. It was about 6 p.m. one night, and I was just returning home from class. I had planned on just stopping at my apartment and then leaving to drive to my mom's house for the weekend. I worked about 40 minutes away near my mom's home, so I tended to stay there on weekends anyway. As I was approaching the elevator door, I noticed that someone was holding it open for a group of us. As I was walking towards it, I noticed one of the people he'd held it open for did not appear to be a college student. Not only was he much older, in his early 40s or so, but he looked homeless for lack of better words. He was extremely dirty and was wearing dirty clothes as well. Obviously, he stood out to me, but apparently not to the other people in the elevator because no one was really watching him except for me. I watched to see what floor he would push when he walked in, but he didn't push a floor button at all. Big red flag right away. I was on the very top floor, and I was one of the last people to enter. I noticed I was the only one to push that floor button. Fuck, if this guy didn't get out on the lower floor, he was definitely up to something. As the floors started to open, and people started to get out, I noticed he was now looking right at me, not getting off at any of the other stops. Before long, it was just me and him. I had to think fast because the fact he didn't press my floor but had entered before me and the fact that he appeared out of place were both huge red flags. I decided I would let him out of the elevator first. Then he would have the choice of left or right. If he chose left, I could run right and get to my door. I got my key ready and let him out. He hesitated for a moment and I pretended to be stuck looking for something in my purse. He got out and went left. Awesome. I head right and sprint right into my apartment, which was located fairly close to the elevator. I glance back just as I'm walking in and see him standing in front of a random door, looking at me. I went into my room and locked the door right away. I grabbed the few things I needed and kept thinking about how weird that was. I almost started to let myself think that maybe he was dating someone in one of the other apartments. I started to try and rationalize his behavior, but I knew this was just strange. I grabbed my things and headed back out. I made sure to double check the hallway before going to the elevator as well. It was empty. Thank God. I get back in the elevator and take it down to the lobby. I go to get out, when who do I see getting in with a brand new group of people? That same guy. What the fuck? Now I knew for sure he was not supposed to be here. He saw me, and his eyes grew wide immediately. 
I went to pull out my phone because I knew I couldn't just let him wander around here. I was about to call the cops while walking out of the lobby when I ran into the security guard who watches our building after a certain time. I told him everything I'd seen. He decided to contact the police and have them waiting for the man when he got back down. He said he would go up and try to find him as well. He told me I did the right thing. I still felt bad that someone else could have potentially been in danger. I hoped he was only a thief and not some sort of rapist or murderer. I didn't hear anything else about it after and never ran into that same security guard again, so I can't say what happened for sure. I'd luckily caught a good look at him, so I hope my description helped find him at least. He might have known I was going to do something though and aborted his mission before he got caught. Either way, I always tell people to watch out for stuff like that. Stuff that we always call red flags around here.